Greetings, I am Dr. S. Munish Balaji. Today, we will be talking about prothrombin time. So, what is prothrombin time? It is a parameter used to evaluate the extrinsic and common pathways of coagulation, which would detect deficiencies of factors 2, 5, 7 and 10 as well as low fibrinogen concentrations. It measures the time in seconds for plasma to clot after adding thromboplastin, which is a mixture of tissue factor, calcium and phospholipid. Many different preparations of thromboplastin reagents are available, which can give different prothrombin time results even when using the same plasma sample. Due to this variability, the WHO has introduced the International Normalized Ratio or the INR and this has become the standard reporting format for prothrombin time results. So how is it done? The blood sample is obtained through standard percutaneous phlebotomy and the venous samples thus collected are put in plastic tubes with a light blue top that contains 3.2% sodium citrate. This sodium citrate serves to chelate the calcium in the blood sample, thereby preventing activation of the coagulation cascades, thus keeping the sample in stasis till it is ready to be tested. The tube filling must be to within 90% of full collection volume, with the blood to sodium citrate ratio being 9 is to 1. Upon collection, the sample should be mixed gently with the sodium citrate by inversion, which is to be done 3 or 4 times. The tube should not be shaken as this can cause hemolysis, which can lead to inaccurate results. Once the blood sample is ready to be tested, calcium chloride is then added to restore the calcium required for coagulation activation. The samples thus collected should be tested within 2 hours if kept at room temperature or within 4 hours if kept in a cold temperature that is 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. Blood samples for prothrombin time testing are acceptable only if stored for less than 24 hours either at room temperature or at 4 degrees Celsius. Prolonged cold storage at 4 degrees Celsius or lower can activate factor 7 leading to shortened prothrombin time results. The indications for doing a prothrombin time test are 1. Monitoring the patient's status when giving vitamin K antagonists such as warfarin. 2. Evaluation of unexplained bleeding. 3. Diagnosing disseminated intravascular coagulation. 4. Obtaining baseline value before initiating anticoagulation therapy. And finally, 5. Assessment of liver synthesis function. And to calculate the model for end stage liver disease, MELD score in liver disease. The reference value for prothrombin time varies between laboratories since different facilities use different reagents and different instruments. However, in most labs, the normal range is 10 to 13 seconds. The causes of a prolonged prothrombin time are warfarin use, vitamin K deficiency, liver disease due to the diminished synthesis of clotting factors from the liver, deficiency of factors 7, 10, 2 which is prothrombin, 5 or fibrinogen, presence of inhibitors to the above said factors, disseminated intravascular coagulation DIC after bolus administration of heparin, massive blood transfusion due to dilution of plasma clotting factors, hypothermia as it causes inhibition of a series of enzymatic reactions of the coagulation cascade and the presence of antiphospholipid antibodies which can cause increased conversion of prothrombin to thrombin in vivo leading to an overall decrease in prothrombin 
This can lead to an increased prothrombin time. The causes of a decreased prothrombin time are vitamin K supplementation and fresh frozen plasma transfusion. While interpreting a prothrombin time test, the following factors must be considered. In general, the prothrombin time is more sensitive to factor 7 deficiency than to other factor deficiencies in the final common pathway. An adequate volume of blood is necessary for an accurate result. The volume of anticoagulant citrate in an adult tube is about 0.5 ml and the intended ratio of whole blood to citrate is 9 to 1. Hence, the tube must be filled to at least 60 to 80 percent. On the other hand, the recommended plasma to citrate ratio is 5 to 1. So, in certain conditions such as polycythemia vera, myelodysplastic syndromes, or cyanotic congenital heart diseases, there is an elevated hematocrit, which can result in a decrease in the plasma content of the sample relative to the citrate component, thus resulting in a falsely prolonged prothrombin time. In such a case, an appropriate amount of citrate with the recommended plasma to citrate ratio of 5 is to 1 is to be added to the blood sample manually in a glass test tube. A blood sample obtained after a bolus of heparin or through heparin coated catheters may affect the prothrombin time. Heparin exerts its anticoagulant effect by inhibiting factor 2 of the final common pathway of coagulation. Hence, it may prolong the prothrombin time. In order to avoid this, heparin neutralizers are added to the thromboplastin reagent. And these can neutralize up to 2 units per ml of heparin. However, excess heparin may overcome the ability of the neutralizing agent and prolong the prothrombin time. Another factor that may cause an artifactual prothrombin time result is plasma turbidity. The current method of detecting clot formation is through an automated photo-optical method that records changes in light transmittance. As such, Excess plasma turbidity seen in conditions like severe hyperlipidemia, hyperbilirubinemia and hemolysis may cause artifactual prothrombin time results. Thank you.